Bum, ba, da, da. Howdy, welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. My name is Ben Clark. What are the odds? This is your favorite online home to learn how to play the guitar, the banjo, and the mandolin. This week I've got a special treat for you. I get lots of requests to play old gospel songs, especially finger style gospel songs. And I have a special guitar here. It actually was owned by Ricky Skaggs for years and years. It's now in my possession. It's an old bourgeois, uh, one of the first generations that Dana Bourgeois made. It's Brazilian rosewood. It sounds fantastic, as you heard. But if you want to learn this tune, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube here in Luau, I'll ask you to go over to banjobenclark.com where you can join as a Gold Pick member and you can find the tabs there. I have PDF and TEF file forms of the tabs there, as well as about a 30 minute video lesson teaching you how to play this song. Okay, and it's a good one. It's a good one. So go check it out. BanjoBenClark.com. Let's dive into the first measure of In the Sweet By and By. One of my favorite old tunes, In the Sweet By and By, key of C. Okay, we're doing finger style. Now, I'm using my banjo picks. You don't have to do that. But we are just playing with our first three fingers, our thumb and our first two fingers there. Okay, and I have that notated in the tab. The T beneath the notes would stand for thumb. The one would stand for index. The two would stand for your middle finger. Um, this is a pretty straight ahead version. Um, I've got it listed as intermediate. Um, this is a great one to kind of learn how to play finger style with. Uh, we've, we're just using our three main chords in this key of C, C, F, and G. We'll have a few different variations um, going on in there. I, don't you, I do want you to notice that all of the notes that I play with my thumb, I have a little highlighted color over. Okay, that's just to kind of help you um, look at it and separate it in your mind because when people first start playing finger style, one of the most difficult things is getting your thumb and your fingers to operate all together. So what I encourage you to do, if you're having trouble with this, is to go through and learn your thumb first. Okay. <laughs> Once you do that, you can kind of put your thumb on autopilot in your mind and work on playing the other fingers. Okay, that's a really good tip. The other thing I want to say is, is, is sometimes I have my middle finger listed on strings to play, and you may find it more natural, more comfortable, play your index there, and that's just fine. But we're going to start out just by walking into the melody. We've got two notes walking, okay, we've got our melody note walking in up there, but at the same time we're going to be walking in our bass strings. So those two together sound like this. Okay. Then when we get into measure two, we're going to be in our regular old C pattern. So go ahead and get your regular C pattern, and once again we're going to have our alternating bass. So if you just look at what the thumb does, look, it just goes. I like to switch back and forth with my ring finger there on my left hand. And that's what you're going to need to do because we're going to need our pinky on the second beat there to play our third fret on the B string. Okay? So the measure two slowly sounds like this. Once again. And that's a little difficult just to get your fingers trained to do that. We're going to be using that measure a lot throughout this arrangement. Um, so once you get it, it's, it's just like riding a bike. You won't have to think about it again. But it's several things going on at once. Um, once again, you've just got to remember, after you put that pinky down on the third fret, to be moving your ring, uh, ring finger down to this low E string. And then lift your pinky. So, like I say, it's, sometimes I like to just divide the measure up into little different tasks. So I know that the first thing I have to do is put my pinky down there. So I might just practice the measure up to that point. And then after I get got that down, I know the next thing I have to do is put my ring finger down here and grab that. So then I'll just practice up to that point. I know that the next thing I have to do is lift my pinky and play that first fret. So then I'll practice up to that point. And then round it out with that second fret there. Okay, it's 
seems like a lot at first, but once you get it, I promise it'll be fine. Now we're gonna be using our pinky over here on our left hand quite a bit. Here's another example of that. We're gonna make just in measure three, just a regular F chord. Okay, but we're going to also throw down our pinky again on that third fret of the B string to get that melody. And we're gonna pinch our D string and B string together and then lift our pinky and pinch those two strings. And then jump down for alternating bass. So. Okay. <clears throat> Good. And then go back to our regular C pattern for measure four. And then we're going to raise up our middle finger and grab the second fret of the G string for that note. So measure four slowly sounds like this. again and then we're going to land back on our C chord for measure five and then do some more pinches okay. so measures one through five very slowly sound like this Now when we get into measure six, <laughs> 